Hello viewers, in this lesson we shall discuss human rights of children, protection in India. The objectives of this lesson are to trace the recognition of human rights of children, to identify the human rights of children and their international perspectives, to define the human rights of children in India through constitutional and legal perspectives, to explain the remedial and protective mechanism in India regarding the human rights of children and to assess the response of the Indian judiciary to human rights of children. Children are considered precious in India since ancient times. They are always considered as the future of the nation. They are tender, shy, weak and vulnerable. India is home to almost 10 percent of world's child population and more than one third of India's population consists of children. In the olden days, children were treated with utmost care by their parents, relatives and even by the state. They were spared from inhuman and cruel treatment even by the invaders and enemies. The human rights of children were recognized by the national governments initially and later on by the United Nations Organization UNO and other world bodies after the Second World War. Number of conventions like the United Nations Child Rights Convention CRC mandate that the children are protected from all kinds of exploitation and vulnerabilities. Even many national constitutions like the Indian constitution also accord a special status to the children. Despite the existence of these rights, children suffer from poverty, homelessness, abuse, neglect, preventable diseases and unequal access to education and justice systems that do not recognize their special needs. These are problems that occur in both industrialized and developing countries. Human rights of children under international law. All the human rights available to adults are equally available to children also. Sometimes the children may be entitled to more human rights than the adults in view of their vulnerability and the corresponding duty imposed on the parents, guardians and also the state. International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, 1966. The ICCPR, one of the components of the International Bill of Human Rights, contains adequate provisions regarding the human rights of children. They include the right to life, right against torture, cruel inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, right against slavery and compulsory labor, right to liberty and security of person, right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law, right against arbitrary and unlawful interference in family and home, freedom of thought, conscience and religion and the right to protection of family by the society and the state. However, the most specific and notable human right of children is contained in Article 24 which states that every child shall have without any discrimination as to race, color, sex, language, religion, national or social origin property or birth, the right to such measures of protection 
as are required by his status as a minor on the part of his family, society and the state. Every child shall be registered immediately after birth and shall have a name. Every child has the right to acquire nationality. International Covenant on Social, Economic and Cultural Rights, 1966. This covenant also contains certain provisions relating to human rights of children. They include the right of everyone to social security, right to protection and assistance to family, and care and education of dependent children, right to protection and assistance to all children and young persons without any discrimination for reasons of parentage or other conditions, right against exploitation of children and young persons, and right against child labor and harmful employment, right of everyone to an adequate standard of living for himself and his family, right of everyone to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health and the right to compulsory primary education. Thus, many provisions of both ICCPR and ICESCR call attention to the special needs of children and their families. It may be noted that all these provisions echo the Declaration of Human Rights as made by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948. UN Child Rights Convention. Among the international instruments relating to human rights of the children, the most important is the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Children, popularly known as UNCRC, adopted in 1989. It defines a child as every human being below the age of 18 years, unless under the law applicable to the child majority is attained earlier. The convention changed the way children are viewed and treated, that is as human beings with a distinct set of rights instead of as passive ob objects of care and charity. The unprecedented acceptance of the convention clearly shows a wide global commitment to advancing children's rights. The convention recognizes that the people under 18 years old often need special care and protection that adults do not. It is the first legally binding international instrument to incorporate the full range of human rights of children including civil, cultural, economic, political and social rights. It reflects a new vision of the child. Children are neither the property of the parents nor are the helpless objects of charity. They are human beings and are the subject of their own rights. The near universal ratification of the convention reflects a global commitment to the principles of children's rights. By ratifying the convention, governments state their intention to put this commitment into practice. State parties are obligated to amend and create laws and policies to fully implement the convention. They must consider all actions taken in the light of the best interest of the child. The articles of the convention lay down certain guiding principles and recognize the survival and development rights, protection rights and participation rights. The equality and interconnection of rights are stressed in the convention. In addition to government's obligations, children and parents are responsible for respecting the rights of others, particularly each other. The most important human rights of children recognized by this convention are right to non-discrimination of any kind, 
irrespective of the child's or his or her parents or legal guardians, race, color, sex, language, religion, political or other opinion, national, ethnic or social origin, property, disability, birth or other status, right to life, right to freedom from torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment, right of detained persons to be treated with dignity, right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion, right to freedom of opinion and of expression, right to adequate standard of living, right to health and health services and right to education. The concerns of child and the paradigm of child rights have been addressed suitably in the UN standard minimum rules for the administration of juvenile justice, the Beijing rules 1985, the UN rules for the protection of juveniles deprived of their liberty 1990, the Hague Convention on Inter-Country Adoption 1993. Human Rights of Children in India under other laws. In India, one can find numerous constitutional and legal provisions relating to the protection of human rights of children. The constitutional protection to children is as under. The Constitution of India contains number of provisions relating to protection of human rights of children. They are mostly found in part 3 and part 4 dealing with the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy respectively. It may be noted that the above provisions are in addition to the other fundamental rights embodying the civil and political rights and directive principles incorporating the social, economic and cultural rights. Article 15 clause 3 provides protective discrimination in favor of women and children. The state can make special provisions for women and children notwithstanding the prohibition of discrimination contained in Article 15 clauses 1 and 2. Article 21A directs the state to provide free and compulsory education to all the children between the ages of 6 and 14 years. The parliament has enacted the Rights of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act 2009 to give effect to this right. Article 24 protects the children from exploitation including child labor. This provision states that no child below the age of 14 years shall be employed to work in any factory or mine or engaged in any other hazardous employment. As regards the directive principles of state policy, Article 39 mandates that the state shall direct its policy towards securing that the tender age of children are not abused and that citizens are not forced by economic necessity to enter avocations unsuited to their age or strength and that the children are given opportunities and facilities to develop in a healthy manner and in conditions of freedom and dignity and that childhood and youth are protected against exploitation and against moral and material abandonment. Similarly, under Article 41, the state shall within the limits of its economic capacity and development make effective provision for securing right to education. Article 45 directs the state to provide 
early childhood care and education for all children until they complete the age of 6 years. Among the fundamental duties imposed on Indian citizens under Article 51A, it shall be the duty of every citizen who is a parent or guardian to provide opportunities for education to his child or as the case may be what between the age of 6 and 14 years. Thus, it could be seen that the constitution of India contains adequate provisions contained in fundamental rights, directive principles of state policy and fundamental duties to protect the human rights of children. Legal protection to children. As regards the legal regime relating to various aspects of human rights of children, there are the Reformatory Schools Act, the Young Persons Harmful Publications Act, the Guardians and Wards Act, the Factories Act, the Probation of Offenders Act, the Children Act, the Child Labour Prohibition and Regulation Act, the Commissions for the Protection of Child Rights Act, the Prohibition of Child Marriages Act, the Rights of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act, the National Food Security Act, the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, the Indian Penal Code 1860, the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973, the Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Technique Prohibition of Sex Selection Act and the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act. The above laws are only illustrative in nature. However, they have a bearing on the human rights of children. Enforcement of Human Rights of Children in India The Indian Constitution and legal framework provides for an effective mechanism for protection of human rights. Constitutional Mechanism It includes the writ jurisdiction of the Supreme Court under Article 32 of the Constitution and that of High Courts under Article 226. The Human Rights Courts established at the district level under Section 30 of the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 for the purpose of providing speedy trial of offences arising out of violation of human rights also can be approached to protect the human rights of children. The Commissions for Children As regards the special mechanism to protect the rights of children, the Commissions for the Protection of Child Rights Act 2005 provides for the establishment of a National Commission for Protection of Child Rights and also the State Commissions for Protection of Child Rights. The National Commission for Protection of Child Rights was set up in March 2007. The Commission's mandate is to ensure that all laws, policies, programs and administrative mechanism are in consonance with the child rights perspective as enshrined in the constitution of India and also the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. The national and state commissions are empowered to examine and review the laws of children, inquire into violation of child rights and recommend initiation of proceedings, examine factors inhibiting the enjoyment of rights of children affected by terrorism, communal violence and natural disaster, look into the matters of children in need of special care and protection, spread child rights literacy and inquire into complaints and take suomoto notice of the matters relating to deprivation and violation of child rights. Human Rights Commissions 
the national and state human rights commissions established under the Protection of Human Rights Act 1993 also protect the human rights of children in India directly and also indirectly. As the act does not distinguish between human rights of adults and children, all kinds of human rights are recognized by the commissions and the same are protected by following the mechanism provided under the said act. The above mentioned mechanism is in addition to the role of the regular courts, police, prosecutions, NGOs and activists in protection of human rights of children in India. Judicial response to human rights of children in India. The Indian judiciary, particularly the higher judiciary led by the Supreme Court has been playing a very constructive role in recognizing and protecting the human rights of children. The following are some of the landmark judgments relating to human rights of children in India. The Supreme Court of India has shown profound concern in making the lives of children better. In Bandhuwa Mukti Morcha versus Union of India, decided in 1984, it was held that the right to live with human dignity enshrined in Article 21 of the Constitution derives its life breadth from the directive principles of state policy contained in Article 39, Clause E and F and Articles 41 and 42. In Sheila Barse versus Union of India, decided in 1986, Justice Bhagwati suggested to formulate and implement a national policy for the welfare of children and observed that the children's programs should find a prominent part in our plans for the development of resources so that our children grow up to become citizens physically fit, mentally alert and morally healthy, endowed with the skill and motivations needed by the society. In Lakshmikant Pandey versus Union of India, decided in 1984, it was observed that the welfare of the entire community, its growth and development depends upon the health and well-being of its children and that children need special protection because of their tender age and physic, mental immaturity and incapacity to look after themselves. The Supreme Court in this public interest litigation considered the issue of alleged malpractices by adoption agencies and neglect while approving inter-country adoptions. The court in its judgment set forth standards such that adoptions by foreigners would be handled in a manner promoting children's welfare and their right to family life. Further, the Supreme Court in Vishal Jeet versus Union of India, 1990 Supreme Court, held that it is a duty of the state to save them against all forms of exploitation. In People's Union for Democratic Rights versus Union of India, popularly known as the Asiad case, the Supreme Court held that the employment of children below 14 years of age was being hazardous and ultra virus of the Article 24 of the Constitution. In R.D. Upadhyay versus State of Andhra Pradesh, decided in 2006, the Supreme Court acknowledged the human rights of children of female prisoners undergoing imprisonment. The court directed that the children up to the age of 6 years may be allowed to live with their mothers in the jail and to enjoy fresh facility up to the age of 3 years and nursery facilities up to the age of 6 years. In Bachban Bachao Andolan 
versus Union of India, 2011 Supreme Court. A public interest litigation was filed before the Supreme Court contending that there have been serious violations and abuse of children who are forcefully detained in circuses. In many instances, without any access to their families under extreme inhuman conditions and that there are instances of sexual abuse on a daily basis, physical abuse as well as emotional abuse. The apex court appreciated the stance taken by the government and expected that on a close interface between the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, the state governments and the Ministry of Women and Child Development, positive outcomes should actually be worked out. In Society for Unaided Private Schools of Rajasthan versus Union of India, decided in 2011, the Supreme Court of India upheld the constitutionality of Section 12 of the Rights of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act, which requires all schools, both state-funded and private, to accept 25% intake of children from disadvantaged groups. However, the court held that the RTE, that is Right to Education Act, could not require unaided minority schools to satisfy a 25% quota as this would constitute a violation of the right of minority groups to establish private schools under the Indian constitution. Subsequently, in Pramati Educational Cultural Trust Registered versus Union of India, a five judges bench 